Hello Pharma aspirants, welcome to Pharma Syndrome YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss regarding the anticoagulants. So anticoagulants are the drugs, name itself indicating they oppose or prevents the formation of clots. The natural coagulant present in the body is vitamin K and vitamin K responds for the coagulation which is essential during the bleeding. But here, these are opposing the coagulation. They prevent the clot formation. And here our main focus on the classification of the drugs. And especially this anticoagulants mainly acts on the extrinsic pathway. I hope you know regarding coagulation cascade, coagulation mechanism, there are two pathways. Extrinsic pathways are there, intrinsic pathways. Intrinsic pathway means happened within the blood vessels. Extrinsic pathway means happen outside of the blood vessels, including the tissues and organs. <laughs> and here, in the classification of this anticoagulants, two categories are there, in vitro as well as in vivo. So in in vitro, heparin can be useful, sodium citrate can be useful, especially sodium citrate used in blood banks to preserve the blood for a long time. And especially sodium oxalate and sodium EDTA used in the laboratory purpose. So as a pharmacy students, you know, especially during your uh, uh, experiments, you can use the EDTA or sodium oxalate as an anticoagulant to preserve your plate. So, and a body loan chitis in the rata, test tube lo kauchu, vere dan lo kauchu, laboratory purpose lo miru, kastanga sodium EDTA and use chasta in the country clot of Kunda. When experiment an edi, Successful So this is in vitro classification of the anticoagulants. And next in vivo classification. In vivo means taking into the body. So direct body loki this mali parenteral category. So parenteral by using injections. In that indirect thrombin inhibitor. So thrombin is responsible for the clot formation. Thrombin is a protein responsible for the clot formation. So, the drugs inhibiting thrombin or thrombin action are heparin. Here, heparin is a unfractionated, nothing but it is a large molecular in nature. Because of heparin, it is having large molecular weight, it having poor absorption through the oral route. That's why heparin is preferred through the parental route. And heparin is also having ionization character. So, it is a ionized molecule. And ionized molecules are having poor absorption and distribution. That's why heparin is preferred through the parental root injection. And low molecular weight heparins. So because of drawbacks with the high molecular weight heparin, that is unfractionated heparin, the heparin is fractionated into the small molecular weight. That is low molecular weight heparin. High molecular weight heparin having poor absorption. That's why they make into the fractionation and examples like low molecular weight heparins are uh, parin like a delta parin tinza parin like number of parins are there and a direct thrombin inhibitor so here these drugs directly bind to the thrombin in the blade and prevent the formation of a clot and examples of thrombin inhibitors are uh, thins like heridin as well as bivaliridin Iridin is naturally from the source of leech. And next, uh, oral category of drugs. So next is the oral category of the anticoagulants. So regarding oral category, so these drugs directly taken by the oral route. And here in this category, first one is the comarins. So examples of comarins like warfarin, picoumoral, esnocomoral. And Indian dione derivative is Penin dione. Penin dione. Next, uh, factor 10A inhibitors. So, drugs acting as an anticoagulant, they act on the clotting cascade and they inhibit the some essential clotting factors. So, factor 10A is the rate limiting factor between the both extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. And the extrinsic pathway, intrinsic pathway, and Rundu Goda join the factor 10A and Mata. Factor 10 ने दी, factor 10 ने आएगा मारते गन का, clotting ने दी इनका जरूरत नहीं, मज़लो ऐकड़ा कोड़ा आ गई। So once formation of factor 10 ने 
from the factor 10 it leads to continuation of the clotting so to prevent the clotting the main target is inhibition of the factor 10a so factor 10a inhibitors are rivaroxaban and epixaban so in the name itself indicating they contain a xa so these are the epixaban and rivaroxaban are factor 10a inhibitors and indirectly acting factor 10a inhibitor is fonda parinux indirectly acting is fonda parinux and the factor 2a inhibitors like ergotroban dabigatran pivaluridin pivaluridin okay so this is simply classification of uh, anticoagulants so for more interesting videos to learn pharmacology in easy way so follow and subscribe to our channel thank you we will connect in the next video